forgot that Purdue puts this great one sheeter in their notes where they have all the stats, all the pronunciations, all the information. They do that very well. Please, thank you. Yep.
don't. No, I don't have any.
Good afternoon. We'll hear from the coach with the opening statement in a moment, then questions for the student athletes. We'll let them go, and then questions for the coach. Just a few reminders real quick. Please raise your hand with a question. Wait for the microphone, and then start with your name and media affiliation when you're called on. No video in this section. It, all the video is available elsewhere. If you are joining us by Zoom and have a question, please use the function to raise your hand. Coach Painter. Yeah, obviously, um, I thought our guys did a good job uh, start of the second half, you know, getting off to a, a, a good start. Anytime you have a significant lead in this tournament, things can turn uh, pretty sour pretty quickly. And uh, they made some plays to start the second half. We were able to answer and then be able to push it out. And I thought that was the key um, to the game right there, just keeping things simple, taking care of the basketball and getting quality shots each time down. And then as the second half progressed, I thought our guys did a much better job of challenging them at the rim and challenging them in the paint. When the ball got in there in the first half, they scored um, in and around the basket a couple times, and I didn't think we did a great job challenging. And then um, you know, I just thought it was a good team win for our guys. We, got, we had the opportunity to play a lot of people and uh, get out there and get some experience and get into this tournament. And um, Yale was a very good team. Obviously, they struggled shooting the basketball, and we wanted to give a lot of time an effort into Swain, because we knew that he was dangerous and a guy that could get 30. And I thought Eric Hunter did a good job on him, but I thought our whole team did a good job on him. So, um, you know, pleased with our effort, and we'll see who we play here next game. Thank you, Coach. Questions for the student athletes, please. For Sasha, this is Bob Kravitz with The Athletic. Given all the upsets yesterday and, and also your own experience last year, um, did that play into your readiness for today? Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, you know, we, we make a point. Everybody's earned the, point, uh, earned the right to be in this tournament. Everybody's really talented and, um, you know, tough, and they're, they're hard to play against. So, like Coach said, we, you know, we really prepared. Um, we had a lot of respect for those guys. They have a lot of great individual players. and. Um, you know, I thought we did a good job just being ready to go from the jump, and I thought it, you know we had a good start, and uh, Jaden played really well. We got some good contribution from everybody, and it you know, propelled us forward. So overall, I thought it was a it was a great team win. Hi, Dennis. Can I get two? Go. Okay. Uh, Greg Doyle from the Indy Star. Sasha, first for you. Um, you enjoyed those two threes you hit. How how badly did you want that? Did you need that? I mean, yeah, definitely. It's it's probably uh, the biggest job on my team is to make make and take open shots and open threes. And um, obviously, I've been through in a little bit of a slump lately with my my shooting. But um, but yeah, I'm gonna continue to shoot. If I go over 100, I'm still gonna shoot them up. So uh, yeah, you know, I, it's good to see it. You know, finally go in. But um, you know, I wish some of, some of them also went in early in the first half as well. So it's it is what it is. You just gotta move forward. And then uh, Jaden in the first half. I think you had 18 points on like five shots or something. You had some free throws in there. Um, how good, how much were you feeling and how good was that, that half for you? Uh, I felt good um, just going out there. My, you know, all of our guys, I felt like we all had energy. Um, you know, we just, I felt like we all felt, you know, the feeling of losing last year, um, first round. So I felt like all of our guys were motivated and so was I, so. Other questions for the student athletes? Right here. Oh, you go, go ahead. Brian Newbert, goldenbike.com. Zach, just the close of the first half, how important was that to, you know, play pretty well in the first half, but then also for you personally to, you know, play pretty well and make sure you guys had a pretty robust lead at halftime? Um, yeah, it was important. Obviously, you want to have the momentum going to halftime. You want to feel good going into the locker room. Um, and you want to try to extend the lead as much as possible uh, before you can get that break during halftime and get, get your uh, breath fully. Uh, but it was good. Um, I feel like last year I really struggled in, my, in the tournament game. So being able to come out this year and uh, kind of prove it to myself that I can still do it in the tournament is, um, was big for me. Zach, Aaron Ferguson, Types of Northwest Indiana over here on your left. Um, you particularly play well with Sasha uh, as a two-man game, three-man lineups. Uh, what does he do well when he isn't shooting the ball well? Uh, he gives me the ball. Um. 
It's pretty simple, but he gives me the ball. Uh, he allows me to play. He gives me my ball, my spots. Um, they can't double off him because he can shoot it, obviously. So it gives me some more space. But yeah, it's just really he's really good at post feeds. Uh, right here, uh, Gino Green from Post Game Central. Uh, this is for any of you guys. Azar had his stretch early in the game when he made his first five field goals. Talk about the adjustments you guys were able to make in wearing him down in the later uh, portions of the game. Yeah, we, we um, just drew more attention to him. I thought uh, we did a good job of just jumping to the ball whenever somebody passed it to him. And, um, you know, we did a good job of corralling him in ball screens and dribble handoffs and everything like that. You know, he's a great player, so he's going to make some make and take tough shots. But I thought Eric did a great job of just taking up his space and just making the whole game difficult on him. and, and try to make him make difficult shots. And, um, you know, he got off a little bit early, but I thought we adjusted and, and uh, you know, did well. Uh, Mike Carmen Lafayette, Journal Courier for Zach. Do you feel like you had a little bit more room to move inside today? And how much did that kind of make you feel comfortable down there? Um, yeah, they obviously, they obviously um, sent a double early. They were pretty good at that. But w one thing Coach Payne always talks about is, um, like a lot of times when you don't work on a double, you're not really good in rotations. So they gave up some uh, easy looks like Caleb's dunk, a few open entry uh, passes to get out of the double. Um, so it wasn't like I had a lot of space down there. On the rebounds, I felt like I could just kind of get it over them. Um, they couldn't really keep me off the glass physically. Um, but yeah, it was, wasn't anything like uh, revolutionary. It was just rebound the ball, uh, score the ball when I'm open, pass it when I'm doubled. This is Billy Witz with the New York Times. Sasha, when when your offense is humming like it is, like it was for uh, most of the the afternoon and and frankly most of the season, what are some of the qualities, the things that you guys are doing well that uh, allow that? Yeah, I uh, I think from an execution standpoint, we we uh, you know we do everything that we want to do. We really cut hard. We set screens. We you know, our starting our, start our plays in the right spots and um, we don't turn the ball over, I think is kind of the main thing that when we're doing all those things, our offense is as efficient as they come. You know, I, obviously we're one of the best in the nation at that, but um, just all those little things that go into an offense and, and the details of it, I think we're really good at. And, um, you know, we just, we need to make sure that's a, a focus for us moving forward. Last one in here, go ahead. For Jaden. Um, where did your shooting rhythm come from to start the game? And also, those balls look different. Do they feel the same? Uh, well, it's just my confidence, for real. Um, you know, I'm willing to take any shot um, if, if it's the right shot for me um, and for my team. Um, and, you, yeah, I think the balls are, you know, kind of weird. But, you know, you got to shoot it. We're going to try to take a question from Zoom. Patrick Reed is helping. Hey, it's Dak, Kirk Burmester from TSN up in Canada. Uh, on the broadcast, they showed your mom in the crowd. I'm just wondering if you could talk about how nice it is to have your mom there for the games this week. Um, yeah, it's huge. Uh, she's obviously been supporting uh, all season. She came down, she rented an Airbnb since um, Christmas, and she's just been staying down in Indiana. Uh, she's come to all of our games. She's always there to cheer me on, always sending me texts before the game, uh, sending me texts after. Uh, I'll probably go see her pretty soon. Uh, but it's, it's cool it's just to have a, a slice of home, even when I'm over here in America still. All right, thank you. Student athletes are released at this time. And questions for Coach Painter here in the room. Uh, Matt. Hello, Matt. Uh, when you get Sasha's threes going and then what you got from Caleb at first tonight, I mean, the uh, how important was to maybe get a couple of guys couple of those guys going as you start to make your run here in the tournament yeah I thought uh, Sasha had some really good looks in the first half that didn't go down and um, you know it was good to, to see him knock you know a couple of those shots down just to, to build his confidence you know he mentioned that he's been struggling a little bit and that happens you know with guys that can shoot you're gonna have a period of time during the season you know where you go through a little bit of struggles and you just got to keep working your way through it and keep taking good shots and that and that's what he did and it was good to see Caleb you know Caleb hasn't played in some games because of matchups and, um, and and we'll continue to go you know down that road and just just trying to when you have 10 guys you feel good about you know sometimes 
later in the year you get to an eight or nine man rotation and it leaves a guy out and a lot of times each individual guy looks at it like what did I do wrong when in reality you're just playing somebody else because they match up better against that particular opponent so I thought Caleb was active he was around the basketball you know made his free throws and that's what we need you know when he comes in there he's got to play off of those guys and, and be able to to make plays and rebound and I thought he did that tonight. Yeah, Matt, Adam Rittenberg with ESPN. I think they went scoreless for almost nine minutes in the second half. What went into the defensive effort today just overall, and how important was it to yeah. have that in your first game in the tournament? Well, we wanted to really make it hard for Swain. That was our number one thing, is not to let him get threes, to take up his space. He got going early in the game, and then after that, we did a much better job um, you know, on him. Then they were they were finishing around the rim, a couple runners in, in, in that first half. Then the second half, I thought we did a much better job, even though the ball was still getting in there. It just seemed like you know, they were missing a lot of like runners, post-ups, you know, in between kind of those intermediate shots. I just thought our guys did a good job um, of just contesting and staying with it, then not allowing them to get second chance opportunities. We'll take two more in here, please. Hey, I'm Matt J. Cohen, Associated Press. You have two of the more interesting players in the tournament in terms of matchup problems with Zach and Jaden, Zach's size and Jaden's speed. Like, how, how much of an advantage do you think that is with just the relatively short turnaround in terms of preparing for, for those guys, which are obviously really difficult yeah. to prepare for in general? Yeah, I think it's an advantage, but I think other teams have advantages too. You know, the, the short prep, I think, can help you, but it also can hurt you, you know, depending on who we play here. Um, I think both teams, you know, can have an advantage against us, but we also can have an advantage. We always talk about that, like, if you kind of attack us a certain way, you know, we got to do everything in our power to stop you from attacking us in that way. But then we can also flip it, like, don't get down on ourselves, like, this is over. Like, you know, flip it on the other end. So if they're putting quicker, smaller guys on Zach and they're, they're driving him, you know, they still have to defend him at the other end. And so you don't want to trade baskets, obviously. Um, but if you're getting into the, the bonus and you're getting a lot of fouls, um, you'll give up a basket here and there against that, especially when you got a guy like Jaden Ivey who's getting by people. Both of those guys um, from the fouls drawn, you know, they, they, had, they got fouled seven times, both of them today. And so that's great, and that's what we want. We want to create space for both of those guys so they can play. But when people take up those, that space, you know, you got to get the ball out of your hands and get people in rotations. That's so important for us. When we do that, we're, we're pretty efficient. When we don't, that's how we bog down. Last one in here, please. It's a Bob Kravitz with The Athletic. Uh, how much time, if any, did you spend addressing last year as in the lead up to this game? We talked about it. Um, obviously, we talked about it in the beginning of the season, just the little things and the mistakes we made in that game um, and, and how things come down to whether you're considered a winner or a loser over one possession or one play. You know, you see that in this tournament a lot. But leading up to it, you know, when we found out who we're playing, you know, just how they've, they've earned their way here. Like everybody in this tournament have earned their way here and they can beat anybody and you got to be ready. But we, we talked about North Texas and uh, we, we talked, you know, how North Texas outplayed us more than anything. They had good players. They have a good coach and uh, you have to be prepared. And I thought we did some good things against them also. Sometimes when you, you lose, you look at it like it's total negative and, and it wasn't. You know, we got into overtime in that game and – you know, they, they played better than us. But, uh, yeah, we used it. We talked about it. But when we played North Texas, we talked about getting beat by Arkansas Little Rock, you know, six years before that. And it didn't, that didn't help. Um, but, you know, all those guys that I just mentioned right there, you know, Grant McCaslin, Chris Beard, they're all great coaches. They have great players. And it's what March Madness is about. You know, you got to go out there and play better than the people in front of you. And today we're able to do that. Thank you, Coach. Thank Appreciate you. it. Congratulations. Thank you. Good luck on Sunday. If you have additional interview requests of student athletes, please check with the school SID. The Virginia Tech-Texas game will tip off in six minutes at 3.38.
If we could have an opening statement from Coach Jones, please, and they'll take questions for the student athletes. I'd just like to start off by saying I'm extremely proud of my group. Um, I thought we accomplished a lot. Um, the guys played hard. They played well together, um, left it all out on the court. And as a coach, it's all you really can ask for. Um, my seniors were tremendous. Um, they qualified for three NCAA tournaments. It's the first time in Yale history that's happened. So kudos to them and their efforts. Uh, these two young men, uh, you know, I actually had to sit out a year of school to come back to have this opportunity. And I'm grateful for them. And I'm happy that they had the opportunity to showcase themselves and help our program continue in the right direction. Thank you, Coach. Questions for the student athletes, please. Uh, Jalen, uh, Billy Witz with the New York Times. Did, can you describe, I mean, Purdue's offense is so varied. They have so many different guys with different skill sets and just what the challenges in defending, trying to defend that? Um, I mean, they have a 7'4 guy in the middle who shoots 66% from the field in 20 minutes a game, averages 15 and 8. Um, and on top of that, they have a t probable top five pick guard, you know, who came out and was three for six from three when that's not really what he's known for. And on top of that, he's a, one of the most athletic players in the country coming downhill. And so when you combine those two things with the fact that they also have you know, their top five offense in the country, it's, it's hard to stop. And I think we did a good job. And, but some of the things you know, that we needed to go our way just didn't go our way. You know, some of the calls that you know, we wished came our way, you know, they made 27 to 33 free throws. And their big guys, who usually shoot around 50%, shot about 80%. And so if those things happen, you know, it's, it's going to hard to win a team who was in the Big Ten championship game in, you know, and lost the Big Ten Championship game. So I'm proud of our team for competing. You know, we're an undersized team playing against one of the biggest teams in the country. And so, you know, I thought we played tough and it didn't go our way. It's Bob Kravitz with the Athletic Azar. Just to follow up on that, what is it like to actually play against that much size? Um, I mean, it's it's without saying like it's it's different than the Ivy League, obviously. Um, I mean, and it was something that like we were gonna try to prepare for. I mean, like we I thought we prepared in a way that gave us a chance to come out victorious. And kind of like Jalen said, there were just a few things, maybe a few mishaps that we missed early in the game and, and stuff like that during runs that that just compounded. And in a game like that against a team that you know held the number one spot in the country for. A couple weeks um, at the beginning of the season. It, I mean, it's going to be hard to come out with a victory. Um, so we needed to play a little better than we did, and um, I mean, that's just how it goes. It was one of those days. Right here in front. Hi, Jay Cohen, Associated Press. Razor, you, you got off to a really nice start, and then it slowed down a little bit. Did they do anything different on you during the course of the game to help sort of try and slow you down? Um. Not that I felt. I mean, I felt like I missed a lot of shots that I'm very more than capable of making. Um, and some of them weren't even contested or, or that contested. So, you know, I'll obviously look inwards um, when it comes to that because I feel like I can get any shot off on the court. It's just a matter of, you know, making it. And those are shots that I work on. Um, so, I mean, I'm not really paying attention to, to what they're doing. I didn't sense any, like, extreme changes or anything like that. I felt like I just missed some shots in the second half. Anything else for the student athletes? Right there. Will McCormack with the Yale Daily News. Azar Jalen, you guys hung around in the first half and then were down you know, about a dozen at halftime. Came out and had two early back baskets in the, in the start of the second. What was sort of the halftime discussion like and what were your, sort of your plans coming out in the second half? Um, I mean, you know, we had to come out and, and make a run from the get-go. You know, if we wouldn't have a chance to win the game, we, we couldn't let them get comfortable again right off the bat. And so to come out, you know, make a push, you know, off the first possession was, you know, our primary focus. And to just continue playing our game, you know. If, if we continue to do what we do over the course of 40 minutes and we, we make shots and we run, you know, run our actions well, we'll give ourselves a good chance regardless of the runs that they make. And, you know, we shot four for 17 from three and 23 for 63 from the field. I mean, 
And so, you know, some of those shots just have to go down. For it, to, you know, we, it got down to nine. You know, they went on the run, and we weren't able to weather it enough to keep it down. We will let the student athletes go. Thank you, gentlemen. And questions for Coach Jones, please. All right, boys. Uh, Coach Andy Craig with the Exponent. I just want to ask, kind of, uh, want you to talk about kind of the issues your team faced without being able to establish establish a post presence. Kind of the idea that obviously we had six inches over the. Uh, you know, the height that you guys had. And I want to talk about the lower selection, the lower percentage shots you guys had to take, kind of, uh, you're outscoring the paint. And I mean, uh, I don't know where I'm trying to go with that. Like, I, I don't know either. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, do you feel that because of uh, kind of the lack of height you had in your team that you had to take lower percentage shots outside of the paint? Well, I, I, you probably haven't seen us play most of the year, right? Probably your first game. So the shots we had today are similar to shots that we normally take. You know, like Azar said, he had a lot of open shots that he thought that he could make. Um, the one thing that I wish we could have done a better job of is getting the ball to Matt Noling in the first ha in the second in the first half. Um, he's normally the guy that scores at the basket. Our five guys don't really do that quite often. Maybe we get him off a roll, but when you know um, they they have drop coverage and they have Edie in the middle of the paint, it's hard for anybody to score at the basket. Um, so um, I'm not certain that it forced us to taking a lot of shots that we don't normally take. I thought we had a lot of those. And, you know, we, we missed some opportunities that I felt like, you know, should have gone down but did not. Hi, uh, James. Uh, Jay Cohen with the Associated Press. Uh, first one, kind of quick one. Um, putting Jarvis in the starting lineup, was that out of concern about the size of Purdue? Or was there another uh, rationale there? Yeah, that's my dad right there. And uh, he didn't raise a fool. So, um, you know, we could have st started Isaiah Kelly at six foot six and a half against seven foot four, but that doesn't seem to be too reasonable to me. So um, we tried to match up with size, yeah, of course. Um, and EJ is a kid that, you know, he's a, he plays starters minutes anyway. He and uh, Isaiah split time. So what we were trying to do is have uh, EJ play against uh, Edie and have um, Isaiah play against Williams. And it turned out that Williams played a lot less tonight. Uh, secondly, like, can you explain from a coaching perspective how difficult it is to prepare for a team like Purdue with that seven foot four size inside and the speed of someone like Ivy, who just might be the fastest player in college basketball? Yeah, so I think I may have answered this before. Like, I was fine in terms of their personnel outside of Edie. Like, he's he's just a. There's nobody like him in the, in the country. Like, like, have you seen anybody in your life as big as he is? Like, other than Yao Ming, I've seen nobody as big as he is. So that he's the second largest man I've ever seen, right? And he's really good. So, so from that standpoint, it's hard to try to game plan for that because you don't, you, we don't have a seven foot four guy on campus that we can roll around there and try to defend and try to go up against. So that obviously makes it difficult. Um, the biggest issue for us was putting him on the foul line and him making free throws. Um, again, if he shot normally what, what he normally shoots, like he took more free throws he took one less free throw than our entire team. So that, that was a huge difference in the game as far as I see it. You're welcome. Anything else for Coach? Right there. Coach, just curious to hear about that sort of final, final two minutes when you subbed Jalen and Azar out back to back, gave him a hug, just wondering what you told them and what that moment was like. Well, again, it's, it's, it's a special moment between coach and player, right? Um, these guys have given so much of themselves for the betterment of our team. Um, may they made sacrifices to be special. And it's the last time I'm going to see him. I, I've said this to my guys. I'm 58 years old. Um, and I may see each of them maybe five more times in my life. I'm not sure where I came up with that number five. But it seems fairly accurate to me that I'm not going to see them anymore. That you know They're going to go on in, in life, and maybe they'll be back for an alumni game or come and watch a game. But that's going to be it. It's, it's, it's winding down. So it's just one of those times that I wanted to take in and make sure they, they, they know how I felt about them and uh, how special they have been for our program. Coach, thank you. Appreciate it. You're welcome. A reminder that a recording of this press conference will be available in the NCAA Digital Hub at ncaa.veritone.com and transcripts will be available as soon as possible and will be posted shortly. Thank you.